Vinyl wrapping a motorcycle is the easiest and cheapest way to change the color of your bike. If you don't have to pay for labor, that is. It's also easy to remove and doesn't damage your underlying paint. So if you're somewhat decent with your hands, possess patience and have a weekend's worth of free time, then I strongly encourage you to give wrapping your bike a shot. So to be honest, my credentials aren't very confidence inspiring. Technically, I've wrapped two bikes, a 2000 Yamaha R1 and my old Yamaha MT-09, but only one of which I'd put my stamp of approval on. However, I'd like to argue that that is still more experienced than the average biker. And along the way, I've learned a few things that you should, and more importantly, things you shouldn't do. So this isn't a guide for someone looking to do this professionally. It's for the average biker who wants to change the appearance of their bike for a reasonable cost. Looking to avoid the cost of a professional doing the labor because they're interested in learning for themselves. So with that subtle disclaimer out of the way, here's what you'll need. Most obviously, vinyl. There are about a million different brands of vinyl. Personally, I'd recommend 3M2080 series because it's the best I've ever used. But that's not to say that Avery Dennison, Vivid or other big names are worse. Hence why I wasn't upset when all I could get in a hurry was Avery. But be sure to avoid the cheap and nasty nonsense scattered across places like Amazon. Yes, something like 3M will cost more, but it will save you a ton of time during installation and last longer once on your bike. A higher quality vinyl will be easier to work with, especially if you don't have any experience. Measure out the surface area you will need before ordering and then order a bit extra, because you will mess up at least one piece. I can't tell you how much vinyl you will need because a naked bike requires less than a fully fed superbike for example. A heat gun is also essential to be able to work the vinyl and stretch it how you need. A razor blade to trim the edges, a squeegee with a felt tip to coax the bubbles out and press down the vinyl, isopropyl alcohol or something similar to clean your bike parts, and cutting tape of sorts. This enables you to get perfectly clean cuts when joining multiple pieces of vinyl, which you will need to do because motorcycles are a strange shape. I've always used 3M finish line knifeless tape and it's never let me down. Taking the parts that you are going to wrap off of the bike does make things easier in my opinion because there are fewer areas for the vinyl to get stuck to and you can take the part to a cleaner environment. Wrapping a naked bike is definitely cheating, but still not necessarily easy. I'm also not really wrapping my bike, I'm just going to do a few pieces for this video, hence the choice of colour. But if you do want to see me wrap my old MT-09 in full, I'll link to that video down in the description. Your wrap job is only as good as your prep. Any dirt under the vinyl will stop it from sticking as effectively and be visible as a bump. So start off with a soapy water wash to dislodge any mud and grime and get it as clean as possible inside and out. But then, right before you begin wrapping, go over the part with alcohol or something similar to get rid of any oils, waxes and dust, spending extra time on the inside edge where the vinyl will go around the back of the part. Then comes the part with the biggest learning curve. I'm going to start with this little piece off of the tail so that we can go over some basic principles. And then we'll take all those principles and apply them to this mud guard, which is a much bigger undertaking because of its strange shape. First, we can measure out a piece of vinyl that is slightly bigger than the area we need to cover. The bigger the piece of vinyl, the harder it is to control. So don't make it excessively large. Then it's probably obvious, but car wrapping vinyl isn't like a sticker or decal. It doesn't have to be placed in the perfect spot first time. It's seriously robust, meaning you can stick and unstick it loads of times without destroying it. And heat can usually bring it back to life, removing wrinkles. I would also suggest managing your expectations and ambitions right away. You're not going to wrap every panel in just one piece of vinyl, and that's okay. 
you're welcome to try, but you're probably going to end up just wasting vinyl. So instead, we'll use multiple pieces of vinyl to cover this part and place the seam along the body line to try and make it less noticeable. It's not as satisfying as one piece, but seams aren't visible in photos or to people that don't know where the seam is. And that's where we'll use our cutting tape. I couldn't wrap this in one piece without the vinyl bunching up due to the sharp corner and subtle curve along it. So instead, I'm going to lay a piece of cutting tape along the body line with a few centimeters of tape hanging out each end for me to use later. Then we'll stick the vinyl on the biggest and flattest part first. This section is easy, but now we need to get it around the corner towards the bolt hole. This is where heat will make the vinyl easier to stretch. Try and work the vinyl in the direction it needs to go, while creating as little bunching and creasing as possible. Some creasing can be worked out with the squeegee, but there is always a limit. This part will just take practice, and you'll slowly figure out how your vinyl behaves. Once the majority is covered, making relief cuts to the excess vinyl or trimming it to match the shape of the panel can make life easier. But once the front of the panel is covered, you'll need to work it over the edge and around back. This is the most important part. I like to trim all but a few millimeters off in the shape of the panel and then fold it over the edge as smooth as possible. Make sure there are no creases where water and dirt could get under the vinyl because this is where it will start lifting. The back doesn't have to be pretty because you won't see it, but it does have to be sealed from the elements. Now to pull the cutting tape. Ensure your vinyl is well stuck over the tape and then use the filament in the tape to make the perfect cut. The excess can then be removed and gently pull out the remaining tape from under the vinyl without stretching it. And be sure to stick down the vinyl that was over the tape. Bolt holes are also tricky and unfortunately common on bikes. Here we have a large bolt head which will hide the messy edge. Heating the vinyl will let you slowly sink it into the hole. Again, a relief cut in the center will give the vinyl room to stretch, and then a messy cut by hand will allow room for the bolt, which will be covered by the rubber grommet anyway. Then for the top layer, it's best to do the highest piece of vinyl last, so that the seam doesn't have an upward facing lip for dirt to rest on, bringing more attention to it. Again, lay your cutting tape along the line you previously made, but with the filament about 3mm onto the vinyl, so that the top piece will slightly overlap, but not too much. Apply your next piece, ensuring it's well over the cutting tape. And here, we don't need to go all the way to the edge, since this part will be covered by the seat. And finally, the cutting tape works the same way again, being careful when removing the remaining tape because this will be the visible seam. And that's it, one panel done. And once it's reinstalled, you can't see any of the ugly edges. So this mud guard is a horrible shape to wrap. Basically, it's too round along the top to be able to do it in one piece of vinyl without it eventually bunching up. It's also got these devil horns that would require the vinyl to go in a direction that it doesn't want to go. And then there's also this weird shape behind the fork leg that we have to take into account. But the good news is that mud guards usually hide in the shadows anyway, so seams won't be that obvious. There's also tons of body lines to hide seams along. So although it is much bigger than the tailpiece and it is going to require a lot more pieces of vinyl to cover it, the same principles can be applied. We're not going to be ambitious so that we don't mess up and waste vinyl. The lower sections will be done first so the seams don't have lips facing up and the rest just requires logical thinking and patience. First, we're going to cover the sections behind the fork leg. We'll place our cutting tape along two body lines and then stick down the vinyl. And once the cutting tape has been pulled, one tough area will already be covered. Next, we'll tackle the sides and bolt holes. The body line at the top will get some cutting tape along with the line we made previously. It's not a tricky shape to wrap, 
but the bolt holes require heat to sink the vinyl, and the edges around back need to be extra good since the mudguard has a tough life so close to the road. So four pieces in, and it's still predominantly black. These devil horns can't really be done with any other section without a massive fight. So we'll do them on their own to make the next pieces easier. And then for the top. Like I said, it's too round to be done in one piece for us amateurs. So I'll break it up into two pieces, hiding the seam in the shadows. Leaving the final piece to be at the top of all the layers, and not too much of a struggle thanks to all our groundwork. Again, looking rather good once back on the bike, and no noticeable seams. And although I'm not keeping it, the red doesn't look too bad. So ultimately, with a lot of patience and a bit of logical thinking, anyone can do a half decent job. It's not rocket science, and you will figure out techniques that work for you. But hopefully these basic principles will help you get started. Have the right tools, remove the parts from the bike, preparation is key, don't be too ambitious, apply the lower layers first, heat is your friend, relief cuts can go a long way, and most of all, practice. But anyway, hit the like button if this video taught you anything. If you have more experience than I do and some valuable tips, please add them down in the comments so that we can all learn from them. And I'll see you on the next ride.